Crohn's disease by Luke and Janine. Crohn's disease is a chronic inflammatory bowel disease that can occur anywhere in the GI tract. It disrupts the body's ability to digest food, absorb nutrients, and eliminate wastes. Risk factors. Risk factors of Crohn's include age, ethnicity, family history, cigarette smoking, and where you live. Symptoms. These include fever and fatigue, loss of appetite and weight loss, persistent diarrhea, rectal bleeding, abdominal cramps and pains, and delayed growth and development. Physiology. The gastrointestinal tract, also known as the alimentary canal, is the continuous muscular tube that winds through the body from mouth to anus. The GI tract digests food and absorbs the digested fragments through its lining into the blood. The GI tract is composed of the mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and anus. Now let's review the digestive process. This includes ingestion, propulsion, mechanical breakdown, digestion, absorption, and defecation. Food is first taken into the digestive tract via the mouth. It then travels down the esophagus, which is a tube that connects the mouth to the stomach. Once at the stomach, the food is mixed with stomach acid and enzymes, which break it down into small pieces called chyme. It then enters the small intestine. The small intestine digests the food and absorbs nutrients. The nutrients are absorbed into the bloodstream and into lymph vessels. The food is moved through the GI tract from the small intestine to the large intestine via peristalsis. At the large intestine, water and salt from the stool is extracted and feces are stored until being expelled from the body via the anus. Pathophysiology As mentioned earlier, Crohn's disease is an inflammatory bowel disease. It is progressive, relentless, and often disabling. The inflammation from Crohn's can strike anywhere in the GI tract, but is usually located in the lower part of the small intestine and the upper end of the large intestine. The GI tract normally contains harmless bacteria which aid in digestion and are protected from immune attacks. The immune system usually attacks and kills foreign invaders such as bacteria, viruses, fungi, and other microorganisms. In people with Crohn's, the harmless bacteria are mistaken for harmful invaders due to antigen hypersensitivity. This initiates the immune system. Immune cells travel out of the blood to the intestine and produce inflammation. In this process, chemicals such as histamines, bradykinins, and prostaglandins are released. This leads to increased capillary permeability and blood flow to the area of harm, which causes swelling and the narrowing of the blood vessels. The increased permeability allows newly attracted leukocytes from the blood, such as monocytes, neutrophils, and lymphocytes, to enter into the affected tissue. This leads to phagocytosis and the destruction of the pathogens. Once the intruders are destroyed, inflammation settles down. However, in Crohn's, the inflammation does not subside, leading to chronic inflammation, ulceration, and the thickening of the intestinal wall. These ultimately cause the symptoms associated with Crohn's. In Crohn's, all the layers of the bowel are affected, but inflammation affects the submucosal layer the greatest. Ulcers cause breaks in the lining of the intestine due to inflammation. They then become larger and deeper, and with the expansion of the ulcers comes swelling of the tissue. This causes abdominal pains and contributes to symptoms such as fever. The deepening ulcers can fully penetrate the intestinal wall and enter nearby structures, which contributes to diarrhea and decreased nutrition absorption. Scarring can then occur, which causes intestinal stiffness and narrowing, and can cause rectal bleeding. After time, the bowel wall can become thickened and inflexible like a lead pipe. Ultimately, the narrowing can cause obstructions to the flow of digesting food, to the intestines. Furthermore, ulceration and inflammation can affect the absorptive surface of the intestines, interrupting nutritional absorption. This is why people with Crohn's experience weight loss and fatigue. Treatments There is currently no cure for Crohn's disease, however, a combination of treatment options can help terminate inflammation responses and promote healing. These include medication which suppresses the immune system's abnormal inflammatory response. Diet and nutrition, which help individuals cope with the increased energy needs of Crohn's. Surgery, which does not cure the disease, 
but can conserve portions of the GI tract and help relieve symptoms. Surgery involves the removal of the disease segment of bowel. Key Concept Summary Homeostasis Normally the GI tract digests food and absorbs the digested fragments through its lining into the blood. In Crohn's, chronic inflammation causes ulcers that break the lining of the intestine. This can lead to swelling, scarring, stiffness, and the narrowing of the intestinal walls. Proteins Many proteins such as antibodies, interleukins, and antigens are part of the immune response that leads to or causes inflammation. The IBD1 locus on chromosome 16 is believed to be a genetic cause of Crohn's. Cell membrane The cell membrane of a healthy intestine is flexible and free of damage. Nutrients are usually absorbed through the cell membrane from the intestines to the blood and lymph. However, in Crohn's, the epithelial tissue becomes hardened and inflexible, not allowing nutrients to pass through.